Thanks so much. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move because, um, because I get really nervous. Um, so that is the question that I'm asking, is how can we use creative pedagogies, particularly arts-based pedagogies, to enhance student learning uh, in literacy and also their engagement? And this is something that I'm really passionate about because I was the naughtiest child in primary school. Um, the one that you would absolutely dread having in your classroom, that was me. Uh, I found learning really difficult. Um, when I finished primary school, I still couldn't read. Um, and there was only one thing that I was really good at, uh, and that was playing. I was the best player ever. Um, and the, my favourite part of the school day was when I was outside of the classroom uh, playing and embodying um, what we were doing, which has led me to look at how we can use drama-based pedagogy uh, to improve student engagement and student literacy. Our current uh, educational uh, context, our national education context, um, I think is pretty awful at the moment. Um, we have an addiction, I think, or our politicians have an addiction to high stakes multiple choice testing, which continues to tell students that there's one right answer, not multiple ways of answering a question. Um, we see more and more pressure on teachers to teach the test in this limiting definition of, of what literacy is, when the definition of literacy has continued to change uh, over a very long time. We continue to be driven by data, very limited data, uh, not holistic data. Uh, and we're seeing uh, the arts pushed further and further, I think, uh, into the margins rather than in the mainstream. And yet, there's this enormous body of Australian international research which shows that quality arts experiences and using arts-based pedagogies can have enormous impact on student learning and student engagement. Um, this is like the top layer of a huge meta-analysis uh, so we know that students who engage in the arts achieve better grades and overall test scores, uh, have higher uh, achievement in reading, writing and language development, uh, evidence of increased higher order thinking skills, uh, increased motivation and engagement to learn, they do better in their non-art subjects, they're less likely to leave school early in high school, they rarely report boredom, uh, they watch less television than uh, their peers, and they also later on in life engage in more community service activities than their peers who aren't engaged in the arts. So there are all of these benefits in the arts that we continue to push to, uh, push to the sides. So how can we bring some of those into the mainstream? And I'm really interested in our sub-themes for the conference, and I put them in the most revolting fonts that I could find um, to represent graffiti. Uh, and, uh, and because I think student engagement, creativity, um, critical and divergent thinking, uh, innovation and collaboration get thrown around a lot uh, in a lot of rhetoric uh, about education. And uh, Professor Michael Anderson from the University of Sydney calls these kind of words aerosol words. We kind of, um, you know, can't, can't quite grab them uh, and they're not quite tangible. Um, but we go, oh, yeah, we should be more creative. Oh, yeah, we need to encourage divergent thinking. Um, yeah, let's be more collaborative. But what does that actually look like and how do we do that in our classroom? Well, I think using drama as pedagogy, process-based drama, is one of the answers. Not drama as a discipline. So drama as a discipline is where we can get a bit scared, where we're looking at theatre and making theatre and performance, um, and we all feel a bit anxious about that, or well, lots of us feel a bit anxious about that. But we can actually use the um, drama as a pedagogical tool um, and, and look at the process of it. So there's no performance in the work that we're doing, um, it's just about using uh, drama and its processes. So the program that I work on is called School Drama, uh, and I work on it with Professor Robin Ewing from the University of Sydney, and it was established by Robin uh, and our um, previous artistic directors, uh, Kate Blanche and Andrew Upton, who were interested in creativity uh, and literacy in primary classrooms. The way that it works is that a teaching artist works alongside a primary teacher one lesson a week over a term, using drama with quality children's literature to improve student learning and student engagement. So we're using great quality children's literature, not our readers, uh, and we're applying process drama strategies to them, and through that we're seeing really great outcomes. Here's some, just a handful of some of the drama strategies 
And these are really well documented. You can have a Google uh, and find lots of flies. They're also in my book, which is terrific. You should all buy that. Um, <laughs> But we can apply these drama strategies. This is the concrete instead of the aerosol words um, that we can use throughout. And what we do is we, uh, I've called it the episodic pretext. So in traditional drama, we might read the whole book and then jump off into the drama. But the way that we're working is that we read a little bit of the book and then we explore it through some of these drama strategies. And we read a little bit more and we jump in again and explore it again. We're not reenacting what we've just read, but we're exploring those gaps and silences, those critical moments within a text. So I did my master's research on a, a, a case study with a year six group, and I was the teaching artist uh, as well as the researcher, and I worked alongside a terrific primary teacher. We used the burnt stick. Um, which I'm sure most of you know, uh, is a terrific novel, um, short novel, about a young Aboriginal boy who is forcibly removed from his family uh, as part of the Stolen Generations. And there was a whole bunch of really boring methodology, which I'll skip. Um, we looked at how we could use drama to explore and unpack the Super 6 comprehension strategies. Our two literacy areas that we were focusing on um, were, um, were inferential comprehension and descriptive language. Um, and I think drama really allows, drama-based pedagogy really allows us to explore the Super 6 comprehension strategies, uh, and particularly in teaching inferential comprehension. And what did we find? Well, we found shifts in their academic outcomes in the particular literacy areas, but also shifts in their non-academic outcomes. Shifts in student empathy, motivation, engagement, and in student confidence. So at the beginning and the end of the term, we tested the kids. The uh, orange line is the pre-test, and the blue line is the post-test. And what you can notice is the kids who are like me, the kids who are at the bottom to middle uh, of the, um, the, the pre-test are the ones who had the most significant shifts in their literacy score over that period of time. But check out Eamon on the very end there. Only had a really small uh, shift, but quite a successful learner. Eamon, I asked him whether he thought all this drama stuff was helping. Um, and excuse me for turning my back on you. Eamon says, I think it does, because all this drama stuff that you've been doing with us uh, helps us connect to the character and we really know how he's feeling like, or maybe how he's feeling at that moment. And when we can really relate to a character, especially in a diary entry, we can sort of step into a character's shoes easily because we know a lot about him. Another student, Joshua, says, and putting yourself in a character's shoes, it's like when you are in character and you feel a better prediction of what could happen next because you've been through what they've been through, kind of, and so you know what's going to happen roughly, again, connecting to our Super 6. And to conclude, I thought I'd leave you with Zach, who's saying this is his time of his shoes to walk out of the lesson. When we first met you, um, and we had to do that writing task, I thought you were going to be really boring because we had to do writing. But then the next week, and all these other ones, it's actually been a lot more fun because you haven't made us do writing. We've done all these fun activities. And so it's a good way to learn about the stolen generations and how life was back then. Yeah, because we didn't have to do any writing or research. We just got to learn it our way, a fun way. Yeah, and I think that's exactly what our classroom should look like. Thank you so much.